Exxon sues U.S. over fine levied for Russia deal under Tillerson Washington Houston, Reuters, Exxon Mobil Corporation sued the U.S. government on Thursday, blasting as unlawful and capricious a $2 million fine levied against it for a three-year-old oil joint venture with Russia's Rosneft. The U.S. Treasury Department on Thursday morning slapped the world's largest publicly traded oil producer with the fine for reckless disregard of U.S. sanctions in dealings with Russia in 2014 when Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was Exxon's chief executive. The lawsuit and the Treasury's unusually detailed statement on Exxon's conduct represented an extraordinary confrontation between a major American company and the U.S. government made all the more striking because Exxon's former CEO is now in President Donald Trump's cabinet. Exxon took the government to court despite the fact that the fine, the maximum allowed, would have a minor impact on the company, which made $7.84 billion in profit last year. The fine came after a U.S. review of deals Exxon signed with Rosneft, Russia's largest oil producer weeks after Washington imposed sanctions on Moscow for annexing Ukraine's Crimea region. Between May 14 and May 23, 2014, top U.S.-based Exxon executives signed eight documents with the Gore II, the head of state-run Rosneft, the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control, OFAC, said in the statement on its website. OFAC said Exxon had demonstrated reckless disregard for U.S. sanctions requirements by assigning the deals with second just weeks after the United States blacklisted him, OFAC said in the three-page statement. For the statement, see, bit.ly slash 2vnvqf2, the Treasury imposed sanctions on second in April 2014 as part of measures to pressure Russia over its intervention in Ukraine saying Sekin had shown utter loyalty to Russian President Vladimir Putin. The sanctions prohibit U.S. citizens or people in the United States from dealing with those on the blacklist, such as Sekin. Rosneft itself is subject to narrower U.S. sanctions that still allow Americans to deal with the company on some transactions. Exxon said in a statement that OFAC's action was fundamentally unfair, and sued the U.S. government in Texas in an effort to overturn the decision. The company is based in Irving, Texas. In its 21-page complaint, Exxon argued that Second was subject to sanctions only in his individual capacity and that guidance from the Obama administration at the time made clear that the sanctions applied only to the personal assets of the sanctioned individuals and emphasized that the sanctions did not restrict business with the companies those individuals managed. Tillerson left Exxon late last year to become Secretary of State after 10 years running the company. He is now responsible for U.S. foreign policy, which includes helping make sanctioned decisions. The State Department referred questions about the fine to Exxon and the Treasury. State Department spokeswoman Heather Nauer told reporters on Thursday that the agency was alerted to the fine on Wednesday. A Treasury spokesman said OFAC engaged with Exxon's lawyers only, and did not discuss this case with Secretary Tillerson. Tillerson said in January that he would recuse himself from matters involving Exxon for one year after his December 2016 resignation, unless he is authorized to participate. Though the State Department plays a major part in formulating sanctions policy, former U.S. officials and sanctions experts said it was unlikely the agency had a role in deciding the fine announced on Thursday because it falls under OFAC's regulatory role. The back and forth between the Treasury and Exxon over the 2014 dealings spanned both the Obama and Trump administrations, and started with a subpoena from OFAC to Exxon in July 2014, Exxon said in its complaint. Exxon fully complied with guidance from Democratic former President Barack Obama's administration that ongoing oil and gas business activities with Rosneft were permitted. Exxon spokesman Alan Jeffers said in a statement, The Treasury is trying to retroactively enforce under interpretation of an executive order inconsistent with its prior guidance, Jeffers said. OFAC's action is fundamentally unfair. Exxon also cited a Treasury Department representative's comments in May 2014 that BP PLC chief executive Bob Dudley, an American citizen, could continue to participate in Rosneft board meetings so long as they related only to Rosneft's business. In its statement explaining the fine, OFAC said that the Treasury Department representative's comments did not address Exxon's conduct. BP did not immediately respond to a request for comment. 
publicly available guidance on the Treasury's website at the time of Exxon's dealings with Second said Americans should ensure they do not enter into contracts signed by sanctioned individuals. OFAC said publicly available guidance on the Treasury's website at the time of Exxon's dealings with Second said Americans should ensure they do not enter into contracts signed by sanctioned individuals, OFAC said. And by dealing with Second, the company caused significant harm to U.S. sanctions on Russia, the agency said. Because Rosneft itself is not off limits to Americans. Another company executive could have signed the contract with no sanctions risk to Exxon, said David Mortlock, who was a State Department and White House sanctions official under Obama. You could have second standing over the guy's shoulder, said Mortlock, now an attorney at Wilkie Farr and Gallagher LLP in Washington. But the problem here is that it was signed by second himself. Exxon said that approach would have flown in the face of standard business practice. You don't ask your business partner to have someone else sign instead of the CEO, said Exxon spokesman Jeffers. Publicly available guidance on the Treasury's website at the time of Exxon's dealings with Second said Americans should ensure they do not enter into contracts signed by sanctioned individuals, OFAC said. And by dealing with Second, the company caused significant harm to U.S. sanctions on Russia, the agency said. Because Rosneft itself is not off limits to Americans, another company executive could have signed the contract with no sanctions risk to Exxon, said David Mortlock, who was a State Department and White House sanctions official under Obama. You could have second standing over the guy's shoulder, said Mortlock, now an attorney at Wilkie Farr and Gallagher LLP in Washington. But the problem here is that it was signed by second himself. Exxon said that approach would have flown in the face of standard business practice. You don't ask your business partner to have someone else sign instead.